West Asia is on high alert. American intelligence reports indicate that Iran could launch an attack on Israeli soil within the next 24 to 48 hours. Israeli military says it is ready for any eventuality. Israel has shut more than two dozen embassies around the world. While many nations, including India, United States, Russia, have already urged its citizens to avoid traveling to Israel or Iran. The danger is real. Israel watching the situation closely. All signs point to a potential retaliatory strike by Iran in response to the recent attack in Syria. Israeli military is strengthening its air defenses and says it is ready for any scenario. We are prepared both defensively and offensively in a variety of capacities of the army. An attack from Iran's territory will be solid proof of Iran's intention to escalate in the Middle East and stop hiding behind its proxies. Both Tehran and Damascus have blamed Israel for the strike on Iranian embassy and vowed revenge. Israel has neither accepted nor denied the attack in which a top Iranian general was killed. U.S. President Joe Biden says that his support for Israel is ironclad. However, behind the scenes, hectic diplomatic parleys are underway. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke to the Turkish, Chinese and Saudi Arabian foreign ministers. Uh, with all of the countries who uh, have uh, been identified uh, as uh, possibly fueling uh, this conflict, we have had direct <coughs> conversations uh, with uh, every single one of them uh, to press them to uh, cease their support of, uh, and fueling of, uh, of, of this war. Meanwhile, the Iranian government has signaled to the United States that it intends to retaliate, but in a manner that avoids a major escalation. Not taking things lightly, India has advised its citizens against travelling to Iran and Israel until further notice in view of the prevailing situation in the region. Countries including the US and Russia have issued similar travel advisories for their staff and citizens in the region. The clock is ticking and the tensions are rising. One small mistake could ignite a new conflict. Russia, China, Germany and Britain urged countries in West Asia to show restraint. One can only hope that good sense prevails. Your report beyond World is One. Now to take this story further, we are being joined by political commentator Fuad Izadi from Tehran. Mr. Izadi, thank you so much for joining us here on Vyond. Iran has promised to carry out a quote-unquote decisive response against Israel. What should one expect, Mr. Izadi? I think uh, the response is going to be measured and proportional to what the Israelis have done. They have attacked Iranian soil. The consulates, embassies of countries are under international law, the Vienna Convention, are considered the soil of that country. And they attacked the Iranian consulate in Damascus. They killed uh, seven Iranians, uh, two of them were generals. So um, Iran has to respond. Uh, there is no other choice. If it, Iran doesn't respond, these type of attacks will uh, continue. Uh, so that's fact number one. The second fact that I think Iranian leaders are considering uh, is the fact that uh, Netanyahu wants to expand this war. He wants to expand the genocide. Uh, he has been wanting to uh, have a military confrontation between Iran and the United States uh, since the 1990s. Uh, this is not nothing new. He wants to fight Iran using American soldiers. He realizes that once uh, this uh, genocide is over, his prime ministership is going to be over. Uh, so Iran also understands the second uh, fact. So uh, Iran's response is going to be measured in a way to make sure that these type of attacks are not repeated. And at the same time, Iran is not interested in a wider war. Right. Uh, Mr. Zadi, given that Iran itself is facing a lot of economic issues, a lot of social issues within the country as well, do you think Iran is in a state right now to actually sustain a full-blown war? 
you know, Iran uh, throughout its uh, history has shown that uh, the country is resilient. Iran has been under sanctions for the last uh, 45 years since the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Uh, and the people of Iran have shown resilience, they have shown resistance. Uh, Iran has uh, shown that uh, attacking Iran will have a cost, whether it's Israel or any other country. The Iran has been a peaceful country for the last uh, 200 years. Iran has not attacked any uh, country. Uh, but uh, Iran has no other choice but to defend itself. In fact, in order to prevent a wider war, Iran needs to respond, because if Israelis think that they can hit Iran without any response, then they may start a war with Iran, All right. if that analysis... Mr. Zadi, falls. you're making it sound like Iran is fighting a moral war than actually a war on ground. Uh, it's also interesting how you're saying that uh, this war and Iran is actually resilient because being resilient is not what pays in a war. You need money, you need uh, an army, you need a conviction to sustain a long-fought war. But let's shift our focus to Israel now. You see, Israel is saying that it is ready for offensive and defensive. But there is an ongoing war in Gaza, constant skirmishes with Lebanon. And with this third front opening with Iran, I want to ask you, do you think U.S. support will be enough for Benjamin Netanyahu to hold on to fort? And one might add, actually, the fourth front that you also mentioned is his political future. You know, we have uh, American politicians, uh, the, the head of the Democrats in the U.S. Senate, uh, Chuck Schumer, uh, other Democrats, uh, senior Democrats, have asked for Netanyahu's tenure to end because he's uh, engaging in a genocide in Gaza and the weapons that he's using are American weapons, and the Americans realize this is not good for them. Being uh, part of a genocide in the 21st century is, is not a good foreign policy uh, objective. Uh, so a lot of people realize that Netanyahu is interested in his own uh, future. He's, that he ca doesn't care much about Israel's future or humanity's future. That's why he's killing about 100 children on a daily basis. Uh, women and children are 70% of the victims. We have had more than 33,000 people killed uh, by Netanyahu. All right, Mrs. So, Zadi, thank uh, you so much for uh, speaking with us. We are completely out of time. Th sorry for cutting you off. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.